I'm Dan Schwartz, and uh, my current artistic pursuit is the local museum of recent history. So I built a little museum that I take around with me and exhibit recent, hyper recent, hyper local history. What what inspired you to to do this? Well, I worked in a museum for a long time. I worked at the Exploratorium in San Francisco. You know the Exploratorium. Mm. And uh, it's full of interesting objects. It's a science museum, but a lot of the uh, exhibits are built out of kind of scrappy materials, uh, wood, and, you know, you can just see all the moving parts. So they're intentionally designed so that you can... Uh, see the moving, you know, see the parts, see what's working inside of these things. They all demonstrate some scientific principle, but they all have like a real character too. Mm. Like they're kind of like these failed intelligent machines. They're not supposed to be like intelligent or robots or anything, but you feel like they're trying to be. And so like while I was working there, and they kind of are because they're teaching you stuff, you know, they're trying to teach you stuff. They're trying to demonstrate things. So I think that was like a seed of an idea that like, or maybe emphasize this idea I already had and the you know we all kind of have is that like things can actually talk to you or things have character you know you have a stuffed animal and it's a special one it mm -hmm. has a, its own character or you have you have you walk into a room and it has a, a character so it's kind of taking that idea that ordinary objects even mass produced objects can can uh, actually have a really unique thing to say or like a unique way of acting in the world and they act on you you have a relationship with them mm. and they have relationships with each other yeah so it all expanded out of kind of exploring that idea we do these fun activities at work that we we'd get to lead activities and we'd uh like make other co-workers be like okay now you have to write a skit but the skit must include two exhibits as characters, you know? Mm. So they had to, like, you had to analyze their personalities first. Think of what they're going to say in the skit, you know, in addition to you. So it's, like, trippy stuff like that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what do you mean you had to analyze their personalities? Like, like you know, you have, like, uh, what, what can we see in the shot? You can oh, also like, grab anything. And... Yeah, well, like this guy. Mm. He has a pretty special personality. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure what exactly. You can share close to the camera if you want to. Look at this. It's got all the different. It's like a chakra uh, crystal, you know. So, so when you with your employees when they choose the objects, like what do you mean you would have to before they would put it in a place, you would have to analyze the person on just based on the object or something? Or? No, no, I just mean like if you had to write a skit with an object as a character, oh. like you want that object, you're just going to look at the object and be like, what would this thing say? Oh, I see. You know, okay. kind of like that. It's just being playful that's with awesome. your environment, but it, I think that's a cool way to start to access your environment in a different way. That's an awesome inspiration for what you're doing. Yeah. How do you, so how do you find the objects that you put into the museum? Oh, uh, okay. So the museum's like, it's, it's really small. It's like one room, uh, and it folds up so I can take it wherever I want in my car. And when I, I'll choose a location that I want to set it up. Uh, and, and then I'll, I'll start by just taking a walk around that neighborhood or park or wherever I am and trying to kind of blur my vision a little bit, you know, and see, just see what pops out, like look on the ground, see what kind of stuff I find. It's usually trash, but you know, once you start looking at the ground or looking in people's gardens or you, you start to find all kinds of crazy stuff, like, and I love gardens because gardens are where it all comes together that's where the artificial meets the natural in this really strange way most gardens are just like half-assed efforts that people make to like you know put something in their front yard and those are the most fascinating ones because they're kind of like they're this natural environment that's not natural at all it was totally planted but then somebody just forgot about it and so like you know tumbleweeds of garbage kind of float in and get stuck you'll find cups and bushes where like some drunk person just like stashed their cup the night before you find like 
who knows, all kinds of stuff. And then the plants all grow around it. And all these things start having these relationships with each other that are really unexpected, but completely natural. They're just happening. That's just the way the environment's working there. So that's fascinating. So I just go around and pick stuff like that up or find like things that are kind of cool examples of like, like the other, the other day we f I found a, a flask or like a whiskey like plastic bottle but somehow it had kind of gotten sticky and covered in feathers like goose feathers or goose down and so it was just like this weird feathery bottle like really disgusting but it's also like wow that's cool the feather the bottle feathered itself somehow you know like the, these two things are forming this natural this re natural relationship that uh it's completely unexpected but you know that's now that we've created all these things, or the plastic bottles, and now that in parks for birds to walk around in, these are the things that happen. It's like this cool uh, mashup of what we consider nature and artificial. So, like, I look for, I look for those types of, I don't know, just funky things. So, do you go, do you go to the location? That set up your museum and then look for these things or do you beforehand find the objects and then place them in uh, I look for the objects first mm. but the museum kind of chooses them too because like museums are objects right and so the museum is having its own influence on what I can choose it has its own character and it only wants things that will fit inside of it and it only <laughs> it only wants things that like I don't know it kind of exerts this force over me where I'm like okay I have to like find things that are related i don't want just like i don't want just like scattered i guess if i got more experimental i want to get more experimental with it but like i i want like some sort of related objects or objects that form some sort of continuous thought or even like kind of scattered thought like cloud of thought that can uh be gathered by people who who visit it i want to like kind of tell the story of what the museum's doing in the objects I put in, like through the objects I put in there. Mm. I just. I mean, do you? <laughs> do you? Abstract. Um, so the location of the museum. Yeah. Doesn't really have to deal with where you find the objects to put it in it. So you can. It find does. The oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So I'll set it up, and then let, or I won't set it up, but I'll just you know park where I'm going to set it up, and then I'll take a walk, like maybe like half mile radius around it. Mm. Uh, however long it takes me to find some stuff mm. and then I'll take that stuff back and put it in the museum so it's super local and super recent <laughs> but I like the idea of it being super recent too because a lot of it's not like sometimes I put rocks in there and sometimes I put like you know there are artifacts that have been around for a really long time so it kind of throws in it's I guess it's also all like uh reaction or kind of it's complicating this idea of what it means to be local and what it me means to be uh now or present you know because just about everything that's local or present isn't from around here that includes objects and it and it it well i mean the present thing goes in all kinds of directions some things are really new Mm. Like if you find a plastic bag, you know, but even that has like this history that goes off in one direction. It might go off to China or something like that. And then you have it for this moment. It's like, and then it goes into the ocean or it goes into a landfill for another, like, you know, how ma however many thousand years. Mm. So it's kind of like trying to expand like these ideas, like now that we're a global community or now that like, we're aware, we can be more aware of the t the time scales that all these things are operating on and the, uh, the way that all of our products kind of are going to continue to exist in our world and make up our world and what it, our location and our, our history or whatever, like, it's... I forget what I was going with that thought. This, this one. It's all a meditation on that kind of, you know, it's complicating that idea. How do you, how do you define what, what is local? Because it seems like that was what, is what the museum, like the concept of the yeah. museum is what it's about. Um, 
like what were we talking about like um that you can't really define something nothing is ever local is that what you're saying well no i'm not saying that like everything's here right now but uh it's it's like um i mean the the name of the museum didn't come to me in a flash of like you know inspiration like it wasn't just like oh this is the perfect name it, it was kind of the first thing i thought of and it, it just sounds so generic like the local museum of recent history and i kind of like the way that that interacted with the fact that it's completely like ridiculous and like kind of slapped together and the contents are very kind of ephemeral or not ephemeral they're all just things but they're it's really obtuse you know there's not you walk in, you're like, what What the hell is going on here? And there's, like, grass hanging on, like, the wall. And, like, somebody's... We I did a, I, uh, did the museum with a guest curator the other day, my friend Raquel, who was also from the Exploratorium, and she found, like, a plastic bag with water inside of it that it just kind of, like... So it was just a dirty bag, but it was kind of cool that the bag had, like, caught some water, you know, so you had that in there. <laughs> like, it's just, like, stuff you're like, uh, what's going on here? Uh, this is not local recent history. And um, so it's kind of a play on that. It's, like, local recent history from an object's point of view, from the object's point of view, you know? Mm. It's not like, oh, this is what was in the news yesterday. This is... Uh, yeah, they're not. They're not. And the subject matters, and that it's kind of like what are the mundane um, environmental things happening right now? An environment meaning like not just you know nature or weather or something like that, but like everything that's in in that space. All the objects. How are they talking to each other? How are they like? Mm. Who's who's yeah i mean the people are part of that too that the people are yeah definitely part of that yeah what kind of reactions do you get from people like first approaching it and then like exiting it um well a lot of people are just scared to go inside it's a it's like a big black box with a big <laughs> black curtain and it just says the local museum of recent history and uh so most people don't go in and but <laughs> some people get really excited and they go in and uh I think it's a 50-50 mix. People love it. Uh, maybe like 25% of people kind of get something more than just entertainment out of it. Mm. You know, they're actually like, oh, I like like what you're doing. Because we write up labels. I write up labels for everything in there and try to explain like why it's there or w just give it some sort of story. Sometimes it's fictional. Like I really like messing with fiction, the way that that enters the world of objects um and so yeah some people take take something a little more than entertainment away from it uh some people just stand in the door and like look in and they're afraid to go in still <laughs> and it's clear that they're they're not they're just kind of standing there long enough so that they can say they went in <laughs> like <laughs> you know to me because i'm standing there watching them do you <laughs> do you charge them anything no we take donations so it, ha, do pe are people giving you donations from it or no not or really sometimes do you have a sign for people do give uh, i have a really small box that says you know you don't become a donor today sick or something yeah <laughs> so do you, when people approach you do you have sort of like your, I don't know if it's a spiel or, or like an explanation of like what it is. Like, do people, do you approach people to go in or do people come to you and like. Uh, both. It just your, depends, you know? Like, I mean, how do you introduce it to people? Like, I just, I tell them, they're like, what is this? And I say, it's a, a museum. And they say, oh, you know, like, yeah, it's the local museum of recent history. Check it out. And, you know, mm -hmm. then they either will or won't. But I, I mean, it is, a, it's, I treat it, I don't treat it like a, like a spectacle or like, you know, some sort of joke or something. I just treat it like it's a museum mm. and I talk like, like it's a museum because it is. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had uh, cops come by? And no, th they don't seem very threatened by it. Mm. It's a museum, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And how long do you have the museum, um, like, structured there? Like, how, how long is the time frame that you have it there? Like I just so? do it for a day. So I'll, I'll go and collect stuff the day of, 
and then put it in the museum, usually hang out for four hours or so, and then when the sun starts to go down, I'll just I throw it all back in the trash because that's <laughs> kind of where it came from. And there's something deeply satisfying about that. I'm not like... It, it's almost like I'm not disturbing any of it. Even though I am, I'm taking it out of its place. But most of the stuff I collect is trash, and I guess I'm not. I don't. I'm not even trying to like. I don't want it to focus on trash. Like I'm trying to get past that. You know, people yeah. are like, "Oh, is this a museum about littering? Is this like about garbage? Is this about you know pollution?" And it is, but it's not because it, it's more about. Uh, realizing that we can't separate the idea of trash and pollution from the idea of nature and environment. Like, they all exist together. Like, when you throw something out, it becomes... It's already part of nature when mm. you make it. You know, you take it from nature, you manufacture it, turn it into something, we buy it, and we use it, and it doesn't go away, you know? it's mm. uh, And knowing that it doesn't go away... I don't think that's good enough. Like, I think that looking at the relationships it continues to have is way more interesting. So it's like, this isn't trash. This is this is our world, you know? This is nature. Mm -hmm. And this is, like, dirt is covered. This is going into the ground, and so it's becoming part of the soil. It's not like... It's <laughs> it is soil now, you know, mm. like and it's going to be for a long ass time. Mm. So pretending it's something separate that just helps us kind of ignore the fact that it's not, you know. Yeah, it's the same thing. So it's like about garbage, it's about trash, and it's um, I forget what your original question even was. I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> but, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I throw it all away. It's like I'm not trying to clean up the world. I'm trying to if it, if even only for myself like form a new relationship with the objects in the world mm. like we've been told all our lives that there's this line between humans and objects humans and animals trash and nature you know and these are all just these are all conceptual boundaries and they're obviously not useful uh that haven't been useful in helping us reorganize our relationship to the world and, you know, making it mm. a more friendly place for us to survive in. Do you think losing those bond boundaries has a benefit? Yeah, totally. I, th I think it does. I mean, because I think once you're... Once, once you can start ignoring those boundaries, you can start having more intimate relationships with things like you you're not like oh well i can't love this because it's just a rock you know? <laughs> <laughs> or like this animal like is is <laughs> this guy it's like uh is different than me. like you like just creating that separation through difference um it clearly it's different from you but what kind of differences are you imposing on it? Mm. You know, why are you taking... Yeah, I'm not trying to... Why are you taking for granted, like, what you've been told, basically? It, yeah. And form your distinctions. Mm. It's 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 everywhere. Uh, and it exists on, like... It's really political, in a way. Um, but I think that... my The easiest way for me to kind of break down boundaries uh, in order to kind of approach issues from a new direction. It's not like uh, it's not like racial boundaries. It's not like gender boundaries because I'm just not uh, I don't know. I'm just like I, that's just not where my voice is at. Mm. I, but I feel like I can like I've spent a lot of time thinking about objects yeah. and like our relationship to the material world and I do see a lot of really uh, there's a lot of political consequence in that. It's like you can't stick kids in a school that's falling down and say they're getting the same education just because they have the same materials. They probably don't even have the same materials. But you know, like space, objects, like yeah. the way, like we, we can't just like blindfold ourselves to the way these things all speak to each other. Mm. And I mean, there's been tons of people, tons of people have thought about it, but I'm just trying to make it in experiment that can 
exist in public, you know? Yeah. Like an experiment for thinking that people can kind of latch on to. Now I want to talk more about, like, I guess what it's like being a drummer. Uh, oh, okay. And how, because you're also, you've been doing, how long have you been doing it for? Uh, like a long time. Like, like 20 years. No, not 20 years. <laughs> Maybe the better part of 20 years, though. Um, if you had to describe to somebody what it's like being a drummer, how would you describe just the role of being a drummer? It's just, uh, it's, it's almost like you've already died and gone to heaven, you know, <laughs> every time. <laughs> why, do you, why do you say that? What do you mean? No, it's not true. Uh, huh. Well, that's like a way more abstract question. That's way harder to answer than the question about the medium. <clears throat> like just being, like have, taking, that, taking on that role? Oh, yeah. taking on the role of a drummer. I don't know, because I've never, well, I've never done anything else, but, um, hmm, do you mean like, uh, kind of f playing the instrument or do you mean like the social role as I would, a band member? I, I mean both. Uh -huh. like, just like, what's it like being in that position? I mean, I just try to get lost in it as much as possible. Like, uh, I just tried to, yeah, have nothing but the music, uh, mm. And I'm like, I close my eyes when I play a lot. I just kind of, you know, but I mean, it's really, I mean, what do you, <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of shit that happens, you know? <laughs> I mean, what do you, what do you like most about playing drums? Like what attracts you to that? Instrument? I like hitting them. Mm -hmm. I like, like, I like it when, uh, sh when shit's just flowing. You see my language changes too when I talk about drumming, but I like it when, uh, when your body and your sound is kind of the same thing. And th that's like a special point in time where like uh, it's kind of effortless or sometimes it's not even effortless. Sometimes I feel like to get the right sound out of my snare drum, if I'm going, like, <laughs> you know, I got to like, I got to just put my whole shoulder in there. I gotta, like, <laughs> and that's the only way it's going to work. And that's like wrong. That's not, <laughs> that's like wrong, you know, from a, a technique point of view and it like makes my arms sore a lot but i think that that's really interesting that the sound animates my body it's not just my body it's not just my brain thinking okay i'm gonna make this beat and this sound it's like mm. the whole thing it turns in like the whole thing's an organism mm. and like including the music you know like your body is the sound you're producing do you feel any kind of like psychic awareness at all when you're doing that in terms with communicating with not only the band but with the audience as well do you not even pay attention to to that are you just it's strange i definitely feel it with the band if we're all like on point if we're all like you can just feel it when it's like when something magical is happening or when it's locked together it becomes kind of effortless at that point it's like you know you're in an organism with the whole band at that point um but it is that that paradox exists where once you s are aware of it and you're like you look up you're like oh, i wonder if like everybody else feels the way i feel like so i mean that doesn't destroy it but it definitely puts it on the edge you know mm. like taking taking your brain out of it can you literally f can you feel the audience i mean i think i can sometimes but i can usually usually I can't see the audience very well, so I'm never sure if I'm actually feeling the audience or if I'm just like, <laughs> if I'm just imagining that they're really into it too, you know. When I'm really into it, I'm just like, yeah, this shit's this shit's hot. They must be, they must be. But I swear there have been some times where I'm just like, yeah, damn, this shit's fucking hot, and I look up and like everybody's just talking to each other. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. But you know, then there's the opposite times where people are like, on your on the same page. Um, I mean, you play lots of different genres and styles of music. Is there one particular style you gravitate towards more or one where you feel that connection more with the audience or with yourself? Or uh, No, I, I, I go, I'm, I kind of get, um, I go all over the place. Like, it just depends, you know, like mm. you'll listen to different people when you're in different moods or different artists and it's the same with playing drums i go in kind of long cycles mm. of 
really loving to play funk and um, groove music and then really loving to play more experimental like or heavy like with the other band on earth yeah like heavy heavy stuff and anything in between like playing a lot of uh, a lot of kind of more Americana or folky type music right now and that's great too that that speaks back to my country upbringing I loved country music when I was little and it's all great they're all just like I can get into any of it I think um do you feel like it's difficult to exist in the world as an artist oh well I think I'm going to answer that question uh by I'm not going to say that it's it's hard I don't know about the economics everybody's in a different social economic situation you know mm. so it's different for everyone mm. uh, but I do think that you have to see um, understand difficulty mm. to make meaningful art um, I'm and I know that more from just uh, a, not a musical perspective. I think it exists in the musical perspective too. Like, but it, it's a little more abstract. Everything gets a little more abstract for me when it comes to music, mm. and I, I like to keep it that way. Mm. <laughs> but uh, in other arts, I'm sh I think that the way your way of engaging with the world is almost synonymous with. Uh, your way of not understanding it you know you're engaging with what you don't really understand or what's giving you some sort of difficulty to begin with mm. uh, I mean have I, you se have you seen <clears throat> any of your peers just sort of stop and give up or yeah yeah uh, oh no I just keep going. <clears throat> when like seen what it's done to them or do you think it never goes away and or just or have you noticed people who have the artistic drive and are artistic but just never act on that impulse at all? And, sure, and, I mean... They kind of just exist with, you know, a straight and narrow path. Yeah, I've seen... Yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like we've all seen that. Like, people who are just incredibly talented but who don't choose to pursue their art. Um, and, I mean, I think I've been like that for a lot of my life like I played music a lot of my life um but I've only recently started engaging in the world like through other forms of creativity you yeah. know uh I think that's what distinguishes an artist it's it's almost less about your skill level or uh and it's more about the way you're willing to engage with the world you know mm. like are you willing to put your self-expectations aside and kind of engage wholeheartedly with the thing that interests you or that's meaningful to you. It's not even about, like, producing stuff. It's about engaging mm. with uh, with what's, you know, calling you. Mm. Or, yeah, what perplexes you. When you say, like, engaging, do you mean, like, just... Uh participating and, and acting on these impulses yeah so i feel like everyone has these desires and uh, creative impulses like i think everyone has a you know the creative yeah um but only a certain few actually act on it and act on it a lot whereas mm -hmm. other people are just preoccupied with other things that they value over it uh-huh whereas artists i feel like they value that impulse way more than anything else. Yeah, I think that's true. And I think it's like maybe it's acting on it and exploring it. You know, it's like acting on it with the uh, the understanding that it's not going to act back mm. the way you expect it to. Or want it to <laughs> you know? like, I don't know. One of my favorite, when I was first, like, before I even had the museum idea, I was um, talking to this girl and sh she's into uh she was really into like getting to know objects in new ways too you know getting like understanding what there is there other than their material like substance you know and she would do it through dancing and so she'd just like 
set up a camera and set up or, or like in front of the object she found like a, let's say it's like a uh, mailbox or something and then she just practiced like seeing all the ways her body could fit over it and like around it and like <laughs> you know into it maybe and uh i thought that was pretty fascinating that's like an example it, there's nothing really produced there she has a video in the end but uh I doubt it's going to go viral, <laughs> but th that's not what fucking matters, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a uh, engagement uh, and like re repeated engagement, you know, mm. like with the thing that mystifies you.